Hi, uh, I'm Craig Tumbler. I'm, I'm here with Julie from uh, Dilkara yes. uh, to basically talk about her startup story. So, so Julie, tell me a little bit about um, how you got into Dilkara in the first place. Hi Craig, thanks for having me. Well, Dilkara was a journey within itself. Uh, we're, I've been hairdressing for a very long time. So I am of Aboriginal descent. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather is Camilleroy and through that I basically wanted to fuse the two passions in my life together. So I decided to look at my hairdressing and look at my um, generational history and think, well, how can I meld the two together? And that's how Dilkara was born. So I basically uh, pitched the idea to Icon mm -hmm. and I met with Sharon Smith and the team there and I was granted a proof of concept um, session and Dilkara was created with those concepts in mind. So it's fantastic. So we do source all our ingredients from community, mm -hmm. which is really fantastic. Yep. And our main aim is to have fair trade. So fair trade we actually source it from fair trading community yep. and that, that's a huge part of our business that we actually do improve sustainability down the line. Yeah, so it's yeah. actually fair trade in Australia which is interesting Absolutely. because a lot of those fair trade outfits are about you know South America and Africa and, exactly. and Asia but actually doing fair trade in Australia with you know um, the products that are produced by you know, Aboriginal people is, is, Absolutely. is actually something that I don't see often Mm. discussed. Mm. Well it actually uh, came through our raw, raw materials supplier and the research that was put in place there was that uh, and what they actually witnessed that people were actually going into community and paying pittance to put it politely and yes. going on and you know creating margins of you know in excess of hundreds of you know percents on top of what they actually paid and the communities were suffering in that in that process so yeah this company actually went through and has bypassed a lot of those traders and they deal directly with community and you know we're we're in the process of sourcing land to harvest our own products as well oh, right uh, so there, there's a massive supply chain at the moment mm. that's out there and I know there are other indigenous businesses doing the same thing and you know together I think we can make a difference Mm. in that platform which is great yeah and, and you're also bringing uh, some of the australian products to the front as well so absolutely can, can you talk a little bit about your product range and what you're actually providing well we started with 18 products and why we chose them we found they were key sellers in the marketplace and it was a great platform to start with considering you know we could have probably started with 100 products but we chose we'll start with 18 and what we had to do is we had to have a look at what the Australian bush products and the bush medicines are doing uh, out there in the marketplace at the moment. And what we did discover was that there was a lot of work with skincare, mm -hmm. um, a lot of work with food, but coming into hair care, it was quite a niche market. And so it took us about 12 months just to develop the knowledge behind each ingredient. And every one of our products has its own scientific and intellectually property protected in, uh, little recipe and they're all different and each product does um, its own unique thing for hair and uh, and for skin because basically they are the same protein oil protein compound and so that's where we sort of started our research point from so it was very exciting uh, we've learned so much in the process too yeah well it, it, it's great to see a very scientifically based business on natural products exactly. come out of Australia in particular because you, you, you just don't see enough Australian oh, you know, bush food and, and, and bush products yeah. uh, in, in our local market. We import oh, everything. That's that's so true Craig. We found that, um, oh there's so much to tell in that, that instance. You know it's also uh, a whole unique niche concept in the hairdressing industry. Um, we do have products out there that do have one or two key ingredients in but we have a basic recipe that has the knowledge of the, the you know, Indigenous Australians for many generations and that that is just so exciting to a lot of uh, tourists and a lot of international visitors and, you know, a lot of people overseas. You know, we've had great interest from um, particularly the Asian market and we know next year will be our platform for e-commerce within the Chinese market and, great. yeah, we'll be growing our business through that, that market independently there. Um, we, we currently do advise on uh, quite a few international uh, global companies on their formulation blends because of the knowledge we've gained through what we do with our products within mm -hmm. Dilkara.
No, that's great. That's that's, mm. uh, that's growing the market as well as growing your product base. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you know, you learn every day. <laughs> and I love that part about it because, you know, we, we do learn so many different things. But you're right, having Australia, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing, um, I look at it like it's a blank canvas. We get to create, you know, the future of our companies with such amazing resources that are out there. So, so what have been some of the challenges you've had in this, in this journey to create Dilkara? Wow, I think that'll take up a lot longer <laughs> than I've got to tell you. Um, Oh, the biggest challenge I probably, uh, well, there's two, two challenges. And as I say, I think there's three or four in the back of my mind. But probably the biggest challenge is your self-belief is a massive mm -hmm. um, makeup on success. Because at the end of the day, if you feel that you can't succeed at something, it's absolutely true, you won't. And, and that's the biggest thing that every person has to overcome because we're all human. And there's days where we do think we're not you know, giving the company all ourselves 100%. But, you know, I think that's the thing. Take a breath, process it, move forward, find someone that can help. You know, tell them your story, be honest with yourself. And that's a big thing. Um, the second biggest thing is cash flow. I think to have scalability and grow a company, I think definitely um, you really need to have your strategic planning in place for growth. And look, I can only say, the pathway I've chosen with Dulcara is to work closely with the Griffin Accelerator Program mm -hmm. and the investors and the, the um, incubator program, the kiln, and people that are around me that have the knowledge and have actually had impact with growing businesses and may, you know creating multi-million dollar opportunities. And, and they really do nurture you. It's almost like they wear a piece of clay and they're moulding us into that direction, <laughs> you know, with with our input as well because yes. the thing is being a CEO of a company it's just not about sitting back and being a spectator you really need to be involved and be honest you know because there are times where you say yes that is really that, that actually didn't come out very well and it sounds really silly but you know it has to start somewhere mm -hmm. and from there you can create major major developments and fantastic ideas yeah so so what what do you think are some of the key things you've learnt on the journey so far with Dilkara? Wow, um, I'm very creative. I'm trained in hairdressing. I've been hairdressing mm -hmm. since I was 19. I'm well, actually younger in my apprenticeship. Did, did, did you uh, then go into owning? Um, yeah, I bought yeah. my first salon yeah. at, at 19, yes. um, out of the paper. Mm -hmm. I just thought to myself, I'm going to buy a salon, and I did. And mm -hmm. there's You're a little really bit a of a- You're really a serial entrepreneur <laughs> yeah. when you look at it that way. You yeah. started off in the hairdressing I business, did. and then yeah. you've moved into, you know, it's still hairdressing, but yeah. it's the, the product side. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, it's all about leveraging your time and, mm -hmm. you know, creating new opportunities as well. Um, the story behind the, the initial uh, purchase of my first business was, uh, I, I, as I said, I purchased it out of the newspaper. And I basically thought, well, I can do this. And at the time I was a fourth year apprentice, I was unqualified and I moved in. And I was contacted by the Trading Institute of New South Wales, which was um, the TAFE system mm -hmm. in those days. I think it still is there. Uh, and they basically said to me, um, uh, do you have your hairdressing license? And I said, well, no, but I've got my salon. And they said, well, you know, we need some evidence that you're capable to do this. And luckily enough, I had started my apprenticeship in Bankstown and mm -hmm. I had studied very closely uh, with the Schwarzkopf studios oh, yes. there. Yes, yes, yes. So I had multiple um, certificates and diplomas through their, their training institution and I was able to show them uh, the the outcome of that training and they qualified me. So right. hence I qualified under myself. So there you go. <laughs> so um, a bit of by default. <laughs> well a bit of flexibility in the government system which is actually handy. Oh, that look, was that's support. valuable. Yeah. Absolute support. You know, so the thing is look and that's another thing. The the look I've I've been able to become qualified in my project management, my I've got the, the highest qualification in hairdressing that mm -hmm. I could do through the CIT system here. I'm now the CIT Indigenous Ambassador, which has opened up a whole new understanding of the education system here. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, definitely, I think, I think gone of the days are that you are out there and you are the captain of your own ship without any crew. Now what we do is we have multiple captains, you know, and it's like a rowing team. And we can really collaborate, and that's a big thing. Is collaboration really is key, 
Like yeah. I, I absolutely love collaboration, collaborating with um, different companies, and you know that's why I, we are a member of Supply Nation. Mm -hmm. So Supply Nation is a organisation that is a platform to showcase Indigenous businesses. Yes. Uh, globally and in Australia, and it's a fantastic platform. And you know, yesterday I was talking to uh, Origin Energy, and you know, there's projects that we're doing with major companies like that, and you know, other international brands that we're helping develop products for. And it, it's just obviously knowing how to access those areas. But yeah. once you do, the teams that are involved, whether it's with Seabrum, Supply Nation, ACT Government, local entrepreneurs, local innovators, it, you know, it's a great network. You know, I love the, there is an event that they have in um, Seabrum, which is the uh, Wednesday Connect. Yes. And it's a, and you meet so many people, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, last, last week we were here presenting to the Chinese government and that was fantastic. We, we invited some local Indigenous dancers and oh, it was so much fun. And so they got to actually feel my brand as well, which is mm -hmm. really exciting. And that was great where they, they actually did different styles of dancing and, and I was able to talk to them and present them with products and, you know, they, they, they definitely are interested in Australia. Australia has a unique mystery. Yes. And to the overseas um, shopper, it's amazing. And, you know, even off topic, I was watching A Current Affair last night and they had a story on uh, digos and digos are the international buyers here so it's the everyday person that actually has access to friends in china yes and you know they're looking for australian products they're looking mm -hmm. for you know a diverse portfolio of what they can recommend to the international markets and and this is what's really exciting because you know we are on the forefront of that yeah. and they want to understand what you know our products are capable of you know and when you look at the Nuncurry women in you know up near Alice Springs and what you know people like Sarah Brown are doing Purple House you know these are people in our indigenous community that are really making a difference with their their holistic medicine products and you know I, I could list a lot of other indigenous businesses that are doing amazing things with the resources that we have on this land mm -hmm. and I think the the way that we're wa working around it is that we're actually assisting the indigenous peoples in their own environment like yes. we're, we're sort of saying to them okay well, and, and myself like i know where i'm comfortable to do my business and that's what we're doing we're taking our business back as part of the supply chain we're saying well yes. you guys are the experts in this stuff you've lived on the land you know you're doing amazing things so as part of my indigenous business i'd like to create that sort of opportunity for you as well. There's a lot of lessons in what you've said there, which is a little bit hard to tease out, I think, uh, some of them, but you know, there, there's so much in it. Mm. Um, I guess, um, you know, is, is there one lesson that has really stood out, you know, from when you were 19, bought your first salon, through wow. to your know, operating Dilgahara, being an international business, yep. dealing with big corporates. What's one thing throughout that whole journey, do you think, that, that has really, you know, that you've really learned something? from uh from um oh there's been a lot of lessons but one key one that i've learnt uh would be to take the opportunity mm -hmm. honestly like uh take take a chance like put it out there i remember there was days where in the early days i would see um one of my key mentors during my growth was uh, a lady called sasha griffin who is an australian she started pink lily and and she's had that for quite a long time and she's only just gone on the TVSN uh, shopping network as a full-time um, seller mm -hmm. and it's a little bit like that story Joy in the movies yes. and um, <laughs> and now she she that's her full full um, avenue to to the consumer and I remember ringing her one day and just saying look can I come and talk to you and you know she said yes you know uh, Peter Irvine from Gloria Jeans mm -hmm. hi Peter yes Julie I'll talk to you you know, so these guys really want to help. So go out and just grab every opportunity. That would yep. be a big thing that I would advise. Um, I've had a lot of... Um, I, always, I always think to myself, uh, well, it's already no, because you haven't asked. That's right, yeah. Don't you know? guess yourself. Ask them and let them tell you no, rather than exactly. saying no to yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So last week I, I've been meeting with this fantastic group of gentlemen um, that are part of what's called the Indigenous Defence Consortium. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at really helping Indigenous business. This is a major project to do with um, 
government and building submarines of all things mm -hmm. and so I was honoured to be part of the recommendation letter to government to say look these guys are really amazing in the industries and we're looking at going across other industries to help uh, grow indigenous business and and you know put some infrastructure back into businesses and some cash flow and some some knowledge and energy into indigenous business through uh, their um, consortium and one of the key people was Adam Goods and Adam Goods was he's actually the CEO of the consortium and Thanks. and you know and you know, I rang him up hi Adam how are you and you know what open door and it's amazing because these people are wanting to s other people to succeed like that's yes. the bottom line we we it's a community mm -hmm. and that's the biggest thing the indigenous peoples and the Torres Strait Island peoples it's a community mm -hmm. you know and that's that's how we do things we take people with us you know and that's just part of our culture yeah well, there's a lot there's a lot that that helps in the startup culture with that sort of approach too absolutely. It's, it's so valuable absolutely to bring people with you yep um, so, uh, what is one thing you'd do differently, you know, when you were setting up Dilkara and the journey you've had today? What, what would you have changed if you had it over again? Uh, there's a few things I would change um, with Dilkara. I think I would like to jump forward about four years to know the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. if I can, like, knowing. I think the thing is, uh, when you start a business like that, is to choose an absolute key mentor. And I think mm -hmm. I think that's where I'm lucky enough, I have about 15 mentors now, and each one of them has is talented at their own craft. And I can call on them to mentor me in those areas that I need help. And you know, that that that's fast growth. That's that's mm -hmm. just powers you through to the to the end um, a lot faster than you know trying to nut it out on your own and, and you don't have to make as many mistakes because you, you've learnt from their yeah. development and their mistakes. So, yeah, does that answer? Yeah, no, no, that, 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 that's good. You, you, you definitely, I guess you'd get more of those mentors sooner is one of the things oh, you do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and as I said, they've been there and done it. Mm. So surround yourself with like-minded people. I think that's a really big thing. Um, and, and you see a lot of those quotes in the early days and you, and you just think, what a load of rot. <laughs> because you know it's like who writes these things but until you're actually down the pathway and developing an understanding and it's like you grow out of your current comfort zone and you go into another one and then you grow out of that one and you go into another one and you, you're always evolving and as you evolve you realize you know what I could actually write those quotes now <laughs> you know? so these are really really exciting things but I think definitely having fun along the way I couldn't do this uh, without having fun yeah I'm quite a creative person, so I like to see um, see myself having fun. But I, I I tend to have a very short attention span, so I need things that tick the box really quickly. And and it's funny because you'll you'll hit, if you asked one person, the key person I would actually ask about this is Liz uh, Cobalt from Seabram, and and it's so funny because she sees me and and I'm such a big thinker and mm -hmm. she has to bring me back <laughs> you know so it's always like julie's out there and then we bring her back yeah. so which is which is really really cool yeah. and it's learning you know so i have to learn that for myself that okay on that tip okay in this instance this is what i need to do mm. okay and and final question um if you had the chance uh to go back would you do it again i would do it again mm -hmm. definitely Definitely, um, and it's funny because you, you often think that um, would people would people change it? Because that's a great question. Because I, you know you, you hear stories about Henry Ford, and they said, well, if he lost all his money, he knows that he knows how to do it, so he'd rebuild mm -hmm. the whole empire again. But um, and one quote I heard on the weekend was, if you ask people at the time of the cars being developed, what would they want? And they want faster horses. Yes. You know, so there's all these little things. Um, would I do it differently? No, mm -hmm. because I think your life lessons are what makes your business a business it is, and I think it also makes it makes you the person you are as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank mm. you very much for your time thank today, you. Julie. That was a great conversation. No problem. And I wish you all the best with Dilkara. And, thank you very much. And you know, global growth, which Absolutely. which sounds fantastic. And yep. and. And really, a lot of it is about showcasing, you know, mm. uh, Indigenous culture and knowledge, Absolutely. and also Australia out there in the world. Uh, education is the underlying 
SHG. Mm. Love it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. See you.